right. What's going on, man? I heard the little voice say recording in progress. <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming we're good. We're good. Yes. All right. I'm How leaving that in. That's hilarious. <laughs> of course it is. Why do you think I said it? <laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Once again, it's been, uh, we've been doing stuff, but we haven't really done this. Um, yeah, we've been busy. We have been doing stuff though, to like, be clear. Like we did two live streams. We did, we filmed like videos reviews. and stuff, paddle reviews, yeah, did a bunch last... of eyewear review. Um, That's right. Yes. I just, it didn't leave us a lot of time to do this. And then it would be either my schedule would be busy or you'd be busy and like, so you know, here we are. Here so. we are. But yeah, I'm sure the the uh, the audience is probably like, where have you been? We have I haven't been able to sleep. I can't eat. Like, where is yeah. D Dog? You know, so here we are. Uh, Everybody. We're here. We're here. Yeah. We got a couple exciting things coming up too that we can't mention now, but we'll mention at a later date. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, today I wanted to definitely chat about um the UPA, which. So to start, the UPA stands for the United Pickleball Association. Um, and this is the holding company that is newly merged with the PPA and with MLP. So Major League Pickleball and then the Professional Pickleball Association. So they're all one entity now through this. I, I think they're their own entities as well, um, but... I think this is basically technically like the the whole like new co merger thing that we have heard talks about for a while. This is it. And so this was basically what was the final merger. Um and I have a couple facts I'll share about it here quick. Um you know, this news came I think around kind of the beginning of April ish, second week of April ish it was official. Um but yeah, so, you know, I think it's also a big deal to note that they've signed with Duper, they've signed with Pickleball Brackets, they've signed with Pickleball Tournaments, the State Games of America, and they've signed with the new Pickleball Championship Series, which I haven't heard a ton about, but from what I've heard, I think it's basically just another version of kind of like State Games, um, you know, kind of, it, it reminds me a lot of like, golden ticket qualifiers but instead of like nationals being the goal you just play these like you play the championship series and like that's your version of like the big the big shindig whatever it is it makes sense like yeah i, I think you know i've qualified for some of these national things but i'm yeah. just I just don't have it's not in my time. Have you, I was about to say I I haven't had the time to actually go to. Him, oh, that's it. Yeah, so. so it'd be nice. Yeah, if it's more regional, just have things closer to home. That's that's nice. You can actually participate. <laughs> I love I loved when Connecticut had regionals. Look, I'm not going to lie. The facility, it wasn't great. Like, you know, it was taped lines on a track and field field house, but you know, like it was the coolest thing ever for us because it was like this is like our nationals, you know, like, yeah, you know, don't get me wrong. It's cool to, you know, qualify for, you know, nationals and, and whatever. Like, I don't think U.S. Open is qualifying, but if it did, that could be one, two, that would be kind of a cool thing to qualify for. But it's like, you know, look, some of us have families. We have, we have lives, you know, <laughs> jobs. Like, we can't just like up and leave for an entire week of pickleball. And so no. it's, you know, it'd be nice, but like, so... Yeah, I mean, I I have been a very big proponent of some of these paths um, personally in the tournament scene because I kind of look at it like this. Yes, do I think the local, you know, 3-5, 4-0, 4-0 and over tournament has a place? Yes. But if every tournament you're doing is that and you're just playing the same people, it gets kind of stale, you know? Like, yeah. It does and it doesn't now because I'm thinking too, like just thinking back to the last couple of tournaments that we we did the live stream. I I didn't recognize hardly anybody. Well, that that's different. Well, that's why that's why I put the three five four zero in there. I was about to say the four five plus stuff is different just because they're putting money on it. So that is it itself is bringing people in. You yeah. Know? So I, yeah, the point so. being, it's like I see a lot more new people, different people, and I think that's a good thing. But I, yes, yeah. for for the first 
two, three years of tournaments, it was the same people. I did, <laughs> oh my I God. I could, I think I could name them still. Some of them, like I, I remember, I remember, uh, it was one month. Chris and I had like three in a row. It was a long month. Like we were exhausted by the end of it. And we played the same team in every tournament in the metal match every single time. And I was like, I was like, dude, we should just train with like, call these guys and like, get them to come here for a weekend and just do it like that. We'll save like 60 bucks. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll play so, more games probably too. And so it's like, yeah, yeah. right. But yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's good. Um, I'm really happy to see that it's signed with Duper because this whole like having multiple rating systems thing is confusing. Like we got to just have one, in my opinion, one that just works and makes sense. I Duper is not there yet, in my opinion, by any means. I, I don't think they're great, but it's gotten a lot better from where we were at this time last year. And so... This time last year was when they did that. They just done that change at the beginning of the year where it went win loss. And so that was kind of tricky. I also think they rebalanced the numbering system a little bit last year. Cause I know at one point everyone's like went down a little bit and then went up a little bit. And then like it wasn't on like a results added day, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, I don't know that none of know. it makes sense to me. They, um, but whatever. <laughs> It, it, you know, I guess they feel, you know, you have to have some sort of rating system. Um, there's not enough U.S. Pickleball Association sanctioned tournaments, right? So, yeah. so I, right now, I think I have three different ratings. I have one with the USPA, I have one with uh, Pickleball Brackets, and then one with Duper. Um, and they're, like, all over the board. So, Is your U.S. Uh, APA still, like, a 3-5? I said three nine 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 or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's crazy. Something yeah. ridiculously low. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't think I've ever checked my USA one other than when I was doing. I did one PPA in twenty twenty one. That was the only time I checked it. Um, so, but yeah, um, I, I think I'm the same way. I think I technically have three. I might even have four because of. New Jersey last year where they unveiled the whole like UTR thing with APP. I think those results technically went into UTR as well. So I might have one of those for one tournament worth of results. I don't know. Probably like six, seven games. <laughs> I don't know. And um, I think so someone's using my identity too in creating like separate, uh, you know. Oh, there's a separate gym on there. That's like, <laughs> is it a better number though? Like, no, if it was, I'd claim it. <laughs> I was about to say, because I have, I've heard of people, a people or two, like, I know this happened in tennis, like, because UTR was a thing in tennis towards, like, the end of when I left college tennis, but the number one guy on our team had, like, two or three UTRs, because they, they, like, misspelled his last name, and, like, one of them was, like, significantly better than the other, and he's like, dude, what the heck is this? Like, <laughs> so... That's me. That's that's my, when you that's when you just roll with the misspell like yeah. so yeah okay. um I mean this isn't really a duper focused episode I just I feel like any time that comes up we have to mention uh, that. Well, uh, what so, was that you know, two minutes I mean it's that's, yeah that's well so, what I was about to go into quick sorry to get you there is this UTR system so supposedly it's it's similar numbers but I think it goes to like an eleven or a ten something like that. And so I, I think it's just their version of doing duper. I right. I really don't know a lot about it. And so by yeah. all means, real quick, UTR, if you want to come on here and explain it, we'll happily have you. So I don't want to talk to any of these people. They don't make any sense. So <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, Hey, no, we can hear them out. We can hear them yeah, out. Of course, of course. I thought, you know, they may, might make more sense if they actually explain That's it. That's but... what this work. We have to be able to have conversations with people we disagree with. Right. Isn't that the whole problem with our country right now? So here we go. <laughs> we got the UT, UTR and uh duper and all these other people come on and, and we can tell them how dumb they are. Um, oh my goodness. So uh, anyway, just kidding guys. Uh, so what is it, what's it mean, this whole um, United Pickleball Association? So what I took it as it means is that, at least in the amateur lens of things, 
now I'm pretty sure once whatever this officially kicks in on like the amateur side of things, I know it's kicked in on the pro side already. I think it's still like trickling down to the amateur stuff. I would think it would mean if a tournament is on pickleball brackets, those results are going straight to duper. Now there is no, like, I think last year there was a little bit of a lawsuit at a period of time. I remember talking with a club that had just had like a, 300 something person tournament and none of those results could go to duper. And when the tournament, like pre the tournament starting, they could have. And then once it started, this lawsuit happened and then duper basically emailed them and was like, Nope. And so I think this means results going forward on pickleball brackets, pickleball tournaments um, and stuff like that. I think those are now going to automatically go to duper as in, the second it hits brackets, it hits duper as well. I don't know if that's like a seamless same timing kind of thing or, but that's, that was the big news I took from it in particular, because I was messaging with a buddy of mine um, that's from Connecticut, which I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of this, but Connecticut prior to this year has not had a lot of duper events. So a lot of their dupers are super low but they have like, they have players, but like they just, you know, they didn't have like the stuff to back them up. So sometimes you have to, you know, you have to kind of like, you know, verify the word for them, you know, have to help them get in, in some tournaments, um, you know, stuff like that, whether it's just, you know, by name dropping or, you know, whatever, partnering up with someone for a tournament, you know, but yeah, I mean, um, I think that'll be big for areas like that where it was really hard to find like tournaments that would go into duper. I don't know what it means for the leagues just because I still think the leagues and like the self entry is a little bit of a gray area in duper because I think it's a great way to kind of kind of mess up your duper in a way. It might not be the most accurate, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I've had intense rec games as well, but I've also had rec games where like, I'm going for trick shots half the time. And so it's like, you know, or we're trying like wooden paddles. So it's like, you know, I don't, I don't know how duper verified those should be, but you know, like, yeah. Hey, you know, so, yeah. um, so, but if from a professional level, so there's still a PPA, there's still an L MLP. There's still a PPA, MLP, APP. And then apparently there's some like, pickleball world series or series thing as well that's like gonna go to a bunch of i think it's just gonna take it more international is the idea behind it um i did also see literally the other day that ppa tour india is becoming a thing i don't know if that means like a separate tour or if it just means there'll be like i don't know five events there but that's pretty cool probably it sounds like you know let's say the pga has a european yeah. tour probably something similar like that so I, i'm curious as to why india but i feel like it does make sense in terms of it being you know a big new area for pickleball so potentially um why not why not india exactly well I, pickleball, pickleball australia pickleball australia is actually pretty big a lot of people don't realize this but they have like their own whole like mlp i know there's been an app there before um too hard there's, to get there's to been it. a couple local uh global apps i know that um you are right it, it's a longer flight so uh but i mean hey that's pretty good weather and they have summer when we're in winter so it's like that's pretty good like you could you could uh you could play year round here then whatever like november hits you go to australia if you're a pro you go to australia you play for two months in australia you come back and like Mid February, you know, and so that's yeah, not bad. Yeah. Like, big, well, yeah, pay. Yeah, big. Well, that, I mean, I'm assuming that. <laughs> I'm assuming they're paying your contract. Well, these guys all have contracts now. They're not. It's not like when we started. When like the pro tournaments were like, they would like it was like a barbecue after them. People would like break out the coolers and stuff yeah. like that. And then the, the $300 check yeah. to the winners and nobody else won anything. They exactly. And, and it, it was literally like your flight home. Not, not even, it was like half of your flight home. That's what you were paying. Like you're doing it for fun more than anything. So, 
I mean, I'm assuming they still are. I, I would have a blast if I was a pro pickleball player. I'd be like, this is great. I'm being paid to hit a wiffle ball. Like, you know, so I'm um, assuming an established pro. I was about to say those pro qualifiers, that is roughing and toughing it for sure. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I've, it's like any sport. I've right? seen and, and talked to. Trying, yeah, I mean, trying to work your way into the tennis circuit or the golf. Yeah, circuit. it's it's like any individual sport in that way. It's not like like the end. I mean, I guess maybe with like the G League and stuff like that. But there's like a draft. Is the difference? You know, I know MLP. There's a draft, but I feel like you had to have done something first in one of these tours to even like get considered for MLP. So, yeah, well, I, um, I guess you could to be drafted, but I think anyone could put their name in there and say, I yeah, want to be drafted. I think you have to have, I think there's, I don't know. I think there's certain requirements. Well, I, I, I cause I had a buddy looking certain. into this. I think you have to have like certain results, certain ratings in like the past, yeah. like six to 12 months, something like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean. You know, I I think it's ultimately good for the game of pickleball. If it can definitely make brackets, everything for brackets goes into duper, it's going to make a lot more accurate dupers in the next year to two years, I would think, because I feel like at least for our area of New England, I there's very few tournaments outside of brackets that I do personally these days. Like, I know Swish app and all that was a thing for a little um it seems like it still is but i also kind of consider those brackets tournaments because i've seen them marketed on brackets as well you just pay through the app or whatever and so yeah i mean i think that'll be huge i think that um you know i like to see that it's legitimizing these new championships and the old ones still as you know i've always been a big proponent of the state games of america i think it's I mean, other than that and like these money balls, what do we really have here? You know, <laughs> like, so, um, yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts on it. But yeah, I know you wanted to chat um, a little bit about our NPL draft party. So if you want to take that away here. Sure. Yeah. I was going to say, speaking of drafts, we just sat exactly. through a very exciting draft, right? So mm -hmm. The uh, the NPL, which um, if you haven't watched the our uh, video interview with uh, Natasha Linton, um, and you don't know what NPL is, then shame on you, because um, that was uh, definitely worth the watch. And uh, she's um, anyway, it's it's for uh, senior players, which means fifty and over, which is not senior in my mind. That's just a young pup. Um, but so you're. Um, yeah, you'd dra you're drafted. I think there were teams anywhere. It seemed like one team had 16, but most of them had 14 players. Um, seven or eight different cities uh, were involved. Seattle, I saw Houston, New York. Um, it's like uh, Akron, Ohio or something like that. But uh, it was cool. And we knew, so, you know, for us, we knew that Natasha was going to be drafted um, because, you know, she had – she, she won a, sp a spot out of 60 other uh, women, um, one of only two spots. So uh, so we knew, you know, the, the exciting part was hearing her name and where where was she going to be drafted. And she wound up going to the Seattle. Um, United, Seattle United. Seattle United. I was going to say Seattle Pride, but that's not it. I think there was a team <laughs> named the Pride, but. I think um, there is. I, I just opened it on the other screen here. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean. That was super cool, you know, especially it's I've never been to a draft before prior to that where you're technically guaranteed a spot, but you don't know where you're going to fall because I feel like those people usually would fall right away in the draft. You know, like example, whatever the NFL draft was the other day, and I feel like the number one pick was. I, I don't even know what the betting odds were something ridiculous. I think it was you bet like 50K and you made like couple hundred bucks which is terrible so it's like i know. don't even think that they, they may not even have had a line on that but um yeah no i mean you know it was very similar to the nfl draft the excitement around it the crowd yeah. you know it was uh it was very very close to it we didn't have m&m but we had uh jimmy pickles there so 
We no. did. Yes. <laughs> yes. I we're yeah. working on we're gonna get that footage up. I'm still rescuing some of it. The cloud yeah. is a little messy yeah. for us right now. Um, but yeah, apologize. We so we had the we teased everybody. We had the 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 link on there for the live stream, and then we had technical difficulties. It was it was only shown on uh Facebook Live. Yeah, so yeah. NPL only showed it on their Facebook, which was kind of tricky to mirror. So we weren't able to do that. So shame on them in that regard, because I think it would have done way better for them on their YouTube channel, which I scoped out, which had even more like following and all of that than their Facebook. But I mean, or subscribers, sorry. Um, but yeah, so a couple of, uh, I guess, local shout outs we'll do real quick, just because I have it in front of me. We have... Natasha Linton on the Seattle United. I don't, so here's the thing. They didn't say during this draft, like where, like numbers wise, people went in the draft. There was no like one, two, three, four, five, six. It was more just like, they they would sometimes say like who their number one guy or gal was, but they didn't even do that for every team. They just did it for some. And then, one thing that um, Natasha was telling us is they owe each team has to have one, what they call a super senior. And I believe that's 65 or older, I believe. Yeah. So 65. they did mention that sometimes too. I'm so close. <laughs> Come on. No, you're <laughs> not. Um, anyways, but yeah. So Natasha Linton, as we just mentioned, uh, Seattle United, um, Greg oh, right, and the, these were the, as well the, the, was kind um, of the surprising, exciting yeah. stuff, right? That we didn't know that some of our other friends, people that we play against, play play with, um, had also tried out and were were um, eligible to be drafted. So we you know had an idea that they might have been in there, but uh, so now go ahead and you can say who got drafted. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I'll say that last one again, just because you had a nice tidbit like there. No, no, you're fine. Um, but Greg Bennett, um, I believe he's New Hampshire. I think, I think I've hit with him once. I know some of the others had, but he's our area ish. Um, hang on one sec. I'm just scrolling through here. It's showing me every team, and some of them there's just oh, Michael Chen. That's one of the Connecticut guys. I know that. Um, that was Kansas City Stingers. Some of he's these one names. Of the, he's one of the founders of the the league. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah, Michael Chen. Okay. Um, so look, like the people I were thinking of, the people that I actually play with. So like. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm um, getting to them. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, Sorry. Right. Sorry, Greg. Um, like Laura Charles, me. I know is on um JBB. I think it was like Unite or something. Yeah, JB Naples JBB Unite. Um, I've asked her multiple times. We still don't know what the JBB stands for. This was like a bit this and that Sam Kim was watching were two very big deals at the reveal party. So, <laughs> so um little fun inside joke there. Um but they, yeah. may, they may find out what that joke is it once we post whatever. Yeah, once we get the videos. Went. I'm still working on that at the moment. Um I know Carolyn oh. uh Weed went, I'm trying to find what team exactly real quick. Um, yeah. I know she was very, very, very invested into this process. So well, definitely Carolyn, happy for her. Carolyn and Laura were there. So we got to see them actually run up on on stage or maybe it wasn't a stage, but run up front and get their jerseys and shake hands with their, their new teammates. It was cool. It was really cool to watch that. So, and then Randy Parker. Oh, uh, yes. I found it for Carolyn's. The Austin Ignite. Yep. Randy Parker as well. Um, both Yvonne's, the Connecticut Yvonne and the Mass Yvonne got drafted. Um, Tina Lum got drafted. Scott uh, Trevithan. I know they're both Connecticut as well. Um trying to think of who else from this list i actually don't remember what team randy went to but i remember hearing his name and seeing him in the little uh comment thread thing there but yeah i mean and there's others in here too you know we're just super briefly kind of scrolling over trying to mention as we you said kind of the few that we play with fairly consistently um but yeah i mean 
I think it's super cool that they're doing this. Yeah. You know, and I like we said, it's on it's you know CBS Sports Channel, so it's on. Yeah, it's just a legit, legit. channel. Yeah. Nice thing too is it's on one channel. It's not on like seven where you have to jump around like you do for a lot of these pro streams. You get one exact channel. You know where you're going to be. Hopefully a good time slot. We'll see, you know, if they get like, I don't know. Well, well, what's what to you is a good like pickleball watching time slot? I'm curious. Does this I feel like it varies for everybody. I'd say any time from like 12.01 a.m. till 11.59 p.m. <laughs> okay. I like that. So there's two minutes or, or there's one minute where it's not. I, I, you got to sleep good. occasionally. Yeah, so. you sleep one minute. I like that. Well, no, I just mean like. No, no. I, I, I feel so, like Sunday. Sunday, anytime like four or after is pretty good usually. I feel yeah, like. So. Yeah, Sunday's a good day to watch sports, yeah. you know. I, I enjoy watching them when I'm getting ready for work. Um, yeah. Um, if I'm working out of the house, I'll have uh, some of the tournaments on in the background as I'm, you know, yeah. doing my, my work. So um, it's, it's just, you know, for me, I enjoy just, just like, like with golf, you know, I'll watch the golfers and I'm like, Oh yeah, I, I, I see their swings and I see things. And I'm like, Oh geez, I've been forgetting to do that. And then I'll watch the pros and I'm like, Oh, that's right. You know, I love those little drop drives that that everybody seems to be doing now, you know, more often sometimes than a three third shot drop. So, um, but uh, but yeah, I I just I like watching it. I you know it's it's like hey, you you play a sport and you play it to a certain and you you know how hard it can be, you know how and then you watch some of these guys make it look so easy and that's that's annoying, but it's also cool right to watch. So. Um, you know, so I, I like to watch anytime. So, but I do, I do think having the CBS sports channel will make it a little easier to find the stuff right now. I honestly, I go to, well, I will say that. So when I hit the menu button on my TV, now the, uh, the smart TV, and it goes to pull up all the, my streaming channels, I didn't do this, but it, it just, it automatically defaults to the pickleball channel. <laughs> I love it. So uh, nine times out of 10, I don't have to do anything other than hit, you know, exit. And so, so that the rest of it goes away and just leaves the pickleball channel. Uh, but I like to watch, you know, I'll pull up stuff on YouTube more often than not um, find the tournament. If I didn't get to watch it over the weekend, they usually post it there. You know, you go to the PPA as a channel, APA, uh, APP as a channel, MLB as a channel. You, you, you know, you don't really miss any of it. Um, but it's fun to watch, and it's cool that knowing that, you know, like these are friends of ours, you know, like Natasha and Carolyn. I've known for years. Um, you know, I I, I played with Randy a handful of times, so um, and played against him in a in a tournament. He actually uh, crushed crushed our spirit one time. We had we Ooh, were tough. We were tied a game each, and in game three for the gold medal, um, we had them down nine to three and wound up losing and I, i'm talking to you craig corcoran and randy craig <laughs> how how i lose to craig i mean come on oh <laughs> craggy boy uh but craig. it was dino and i um oh it was one of the senior, senior games but it, i mean anyhow so but like to see those people on they're gonna be on yeah. tv playing pickleball uh with uniforms and with teammates and um traveling to different cities i mean it's gonna be really cool I, i'm ex super excited for it i think uh they were saying may right early may may 10th something i think like that. i think early may is the first event um i will text i'll text natasha after and get the confirmation of that um but yeah and so one thing real quick some of these names were a very big uh topic of discussion at here i i gotta shout out some of these good ones like Houston Hammers, what a name. The Double H, I like that. Um, some of them have got a good logo, too, and the name's not fully there, but Columbus Hotshots, it's got a quality name. It's 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 got to grow on you a little there, but it's it's a quality logo as well. It's like a pickleball, like, flying across on fire. And so, yeah, I mean, you know. I think I would have named my team the Kitchen Dinks. The Kitchen Dinks? Interesting. I don't see it. 
<laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I get what you're going. You're going a little funny there. I got you. The yeah, kitchen. there is some. There is. Try some to keep up, D Dog. Come on. Yeah, the kitchen dinks. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um. It, yeah. I mean, you know, kind of. Uh, other than that, in terms of NPL stuff, we're really not going to know until they play and they get kind of more acclimated with their teams. I know some of them hopped on calls like right away as soon as they were drafted, like just or whatever, an email, and then they hopped on a call the next day. I know some still haven't even spoken with the team yet. So, you know, I think it just depends on how quickly those teams move for that. But we are going to try and do what we can to cover that just because we have multiple friends and people we play with regularly in NPL. So, you know, um, real quick, one thing I did want to mention is something we chatted about on the live stream and it was then chatted about on the actual pro live stream later that week. And it was, why do people get so mad over a kitchen fault call. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm curious, why do you think people get so mad if let's say we're playing and you know, whatever I go for an Ernie and you call my foot, you know, whatever I stepped on the line as I went to hit it, you know? And so, you know, why, why do you think people get so mad over that? I, I don't know. I have no idea. P people get, I mean, I just dealt with this the other night. Um, a fl you know, and you'll see like, they were playing rec pickleball, right? Yeah. You know, so there's no referee, but, and, and you'll see somebody maybe toe the line a little bit. And I'm not going to call that it's a rec game, but if you stick your foot full whole foot or half a foot in the kitchen to grab a ball out of the air, that was, would have been maybe a really nice aggressive dink that you would have had to pull you off the court a little bit to get to. And then, you know, it's like, if you don't want somebody to call you, then don't do it. <laughs> you know i mean I, easier said than done to be fair yeah, depending I, on the situation but yes i i, I agree with that it's like wait yo do you not want me to call the ball that's out out would that make you feel better like i mean it's the rule. some yeah, some of these the people rule. some of these people wouldn't mind that jim some of yeah. the ones so, so yeah i yeah, I, I, I agree with you i've never i've never really felt like a huge need to disagree if i've been called on that unless i'm like I just feel like I was nowhere even near the line. Like, honestly, a lot of the time, like, I really think more about the feet than I do the actual shot when going for an Ernie, just because it's such an important piece of an Ernie. But even like, you know, like you're mentioning just a routine, you know, kitchen roll or drive or, or put away, you know, and you whatever you stumble in or you fall in, you know, I feel like honestly it really shouldn't be this like huge end of the world deal. Like I feel like you just take the point penalty and you move on with your life. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, you, know. you know what I think now I'm thinking about it. I think the reason people get mad, right. Is because it's usually a cut, like in a cool aggressive shot. Right. So yeah. it's usually it's a, it's a, you know, I'm poaching and I'm, you know, jumping out in front of the ball that's coming across and, and I, oops, sorry that I actually stepped on the kitchen to get that ball, but, or it's an Ernie, which is a cool, you know, could be a really cool shot or yeah. a Burke, you know? And so nobody wants to be, I mean, they, they don't do it that often. The so Burt, they, it's they definitely finally, probably happening. <laughs> That's yeah, a hard shot. But, I mean, Burt, but you, like... you, know, you think about it, like you finally do it. And then somebody on the other side goes, sorry, dude, you were, you were like a foot into the kitchen. Yeah. They say, what do you mean? That wasn't anywhere near the kitchen. That's ridiculous. Blah blah blah. How did you even know? True. So, so I I I play off the line because just for that reason. I, how many people like even when they're you know they they try to hit the uh, the ball hard if it's up a little high they always step forward. Yeah, they do, they do a, even if it's just a little nudge like forward yeah. like a little slide of the toe. Yeah, and you know so. you're if you're starting off with your 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 toes up against the line there's a really good chance you're gonna go in <laughs> yeah just your momentum you know you just move and making an athletic move you know if you move your feet so again i look i i don't call it 
half the time I see it, right? So, or, or more than that, I'd say 75% of the time I don't call it when it's egregious and it's just like, oh, come on, man. Like, yeah, that's a great shot. I wish I could stand up next to the net too and hit the ball, you know, but that's not the rules. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like in tournaments, I've definitely called it before, but I, there's a couple pre like preliminary things I'll do. So when they do that big, like gathering of everybody before a tournament where they announce, you know, whatever, the rules and all that, like it lasts for questions. It's usually how many timeouts do we have and, you know, whatever. Call on our own lines, our own kitchen, like opposing kitchen faults, stuff like that. And usually the tournament director will say, you know, whatever, one timeout, two timeouts or whatever it is. And then usually they'll say yes to the kitchen thing. And so it's like, you know, I've had, I haven't had a ton of tournament scenarios where it was a huge issue, but I've had one or two where like, I've had to call people out and it was the same thing too. Like, I really didn't mind it if it happened at once, but like when it would happen in back to back to back points, I'm like, all right, dude, like, cause it is an unfair advantage if you're being able to just like be in the kitchen and hit the ball in the air. Like that's the whole point of the kitchen. If we didn't have a kitchen, we'd all be serving volleying like, <laughs> I'd literally we would player. serve and volley like i'd just be standing at the net waiting for the ball i, I literally would be standing there right there just like yeah. just like that like and so yeah. it's you yeah know. i will say too even with even with the ref i've had refs calling it on people and they get all mad like yeah dude, i think the ref you get more mad because it's they announce it like out loud so, for the world to hear yeah, I played, it was um, the regionals a couple of years ago. I was in the regionals and, the, and this guy kept stepping in the kitchen and the ref kept going, football, football. And he's like, what are you, 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 I'm not stepping in the kitchen. And the guy's like, you are. So, I mean, you know, that person is only there to watch that kitchen line basically, right? You know, yeah, the one at the net. They never, they never call lines to save their lives when they're the one standing at the net. It's if they have two, there's one watching the kitchen. And then there's one like doing the score and technically watching, like, I think it's the rear, the, the, the line. near line and the serve. Yeah. And so, so whatever. I mean, yeah. it, it, it happened. people, I don't know, for whatever reason, people get really ticked off about that and think, think you're being a jerk for calling them on. And it's like, yeah. right, if you don't want me to call you, then don't do it. And then I guess what? I won't call it. So, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, um, it was funny. It was funny because apparently it isn't just around us. It's everywhere. That, it, I thought it was so funny when we, when you sent me that little clip of it. And it was like, I was like, dude, wow. We literally just chatted about this. Um, but yeah. They must have listened to our, our stream. They must have. They, they must have. Out. Hey, we are technically the same audiovisual grade as the PPA. You know, they're the same whatever, you know, FPS and... There, I've seen, I've literally seen the picture of it. They're using a similar board, all that. And so it's, you know, they just use an iPad instead of a computer. And so, but yeah, I mean, it was fun. So I feel like that's, unless you have anything else, I feel like we can wrap for today, probably. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I don't yeah. know. I, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about what we'll be doing tomorrow. Um, we can't time. yet. We can't oh. yet. Next episode. Next episode we'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, there's there's an exciting event coming. That's all we can say right now. So, okay. we will We're next gonna... episode is going to specifically be on said event and what we did there. Try to, so, to live stream that or just post So, me. I think we're just going to roll up. I'm going to roll up with the gear and we're just going to like feel the vibe out, make a ton of videos and kind of like tie it in and then who knows maybe even we do the podcast from there <laughs> like you know wow imagine so that there there is one or two there's one or two spots there i want to show you from when i went there last time um but other than that yeah so we have we have that going on we have a couple other exciting things going on um i know there's a minor league event i think it's in june it's either late may or early june as well not a hundred if we're covering that, um, but we might be. And then other than that, yeah, I mean, it's that and then it's summer, baby. So yeah, a lot yeah. of play outside in the summer. I do want to talk just quickly or at least mention yeah, it. Go for it. We also, we're, because we are kind of the prognosticators now, we're, we're the guys coming up with these ideas ahead of time. So we were the first ones to talk about how angry people get with footballs. 
And so if you watched my, I think it was the Ruby, the 6.0 Ruby uh, review that I did, I talked about what's next, a titanium paddle. And you know what they have now, D-Dog? What? A titanium paddle. Yeah. So there's a titanium paddle coming. And I, it's uh, from, uh, from one of our, our partners. Um, bread and butter. Bread and butter. Yep. Uh, it's called the Shogun. So, uh, which would be really cool. So, um, yeah. I have to save my pennies and and see if I can pick them well, up. Well, we'll write them. We'll we'll see what we can do on that front. I I've been aware of I was aware of it coming. I was not aware it was going to be titanium because they did not put that in the initial like preamble email that they sent, but I it's apparently it's titanium, carbon fiber or titanium, Kevlar yeah. and then it's like 2% carbon fiber on top of that, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It so that's pretty, pretty cool. You know, awesome. that's a first. And you know, I know that the Spartus Apollo potentially is, you know, another combo paddle that we might be trying to get a hold of. Um so mid-May. yeah, I mean mid May. Yeah, mid May. Mid May. Yeah, well May. that's that's on Spartus. You know, you we put the order in plenty early, so that's on Spartus there, but I, I mean, hey, popular paddle, they get back ordered fast. Well, you do. So, uh, no, no yeah. worries. And then we might, uh, we might have, we can't mention what for these ones, but we might have some new paddles that hit hard in our near future. So, um, yeah. So, all right, man. Exciting um, things coming down the road, D Dog. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up. It's going to be a busy May. It's going to be a busy May for us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. I feel like and, that's good, and man. For all of you, not just for us. Yes, but for all of you. that we'll too. That too. Lots of cool content. Actually, you know what? Real quick, while we're at it, if you guys like this, if you guys want us to talk about certain things, you guys want us to review certain things within the pickleball space, anything like that, leave a comment. Feel free to DM us on Instagram. You can message us. I think there's technically a way to do it through YouTube now as well. I was looking into that a little bit. By all means, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Share with your friends, share with your relatives, share with your enemies. You know, hey, you know what they say. Sometimes keep your friends close, your enemies closer. You could do the same with the pickleball podcast. So, yeah. yeah. If you really don't like like us, you think we're terrible and this is like a waste and your ears are bleeding and you hate somebody, then t- hey, you should listen to the dog pickleball channel. Yeah. That's a great idea. I think. Yeah. I like- Exactly. <laughs> okay. So there you go. All right. All Thanks. right, man. I'll see you. Take care.